Comedy is back. Caroline's here was the first major live entertainment venue to open up in the theater district. And now with so many clubs open, comedians are busier than ever. I don't know, I get insecure about like the little money that I make. Like I got stuck in this conversation recently with a couple of wealthy people. And one of them asked me how my investments were doing. I, I, I told them both avocados should be right by tomorrow. So. Matt, comedian, working comedian, talk to me what it was like locked down, like just kind of losing your job for a year, really. Yeah, it was, uh, it was tough. <laughs> it was tough, it was tough for every comic. Um, I did a lot of like social media stuff, but besides that, the actual business side and the performing, I mean, it slowed down to almost a complete stop, you know? Going back to shows, people in person, how do you feel just getting back to how it once was? Yeah, it's, it's weird because you have this, I'm sure you know, like you get this thing of like, can I still do this? Yeah. You know, it's, it's like a little scary, but once you get up there, it, it, it's cliche, but it's really like riding a bike, you know, like the, the first, maybe in the very beginning, you're a little uneasy, but then it just kind of picks back up and you kind of get, you know, you get the rhythm back and, and you're all right. We got married like three, four years ago. I don't know. I'm not really good at caring. <laughs> <laughs> all right. It's one thing to be married, another to be parents, to be married parents making comedy together. <laughs> Are you crazy? Yes, but that's irrelevant. Everyone's <laughs> crazy. It's just how you're crazy. You know? I'm kidding. It's a beautiful thing that you guys do that together. Let's talk about your adaptation. You're on quarantine. You guys decided to write a comedy book. Tell yeah. me how that happened. Yeah, so we had a lot of uh, pregnancy because Michelle was pregnant. Yes, I was. We Hopefully. had a lot of pregnancy and I just had a baby jokes. And once your baby turns two or three, you got to stop doing those jokes so and it's have a some nice, new jokes. Yeah, it's like a nice way for it to live forever. They say while in the womb, a baby learns to recognize voices. So the baby knew me, my husband, and the train announcements like, stand clear of the closing doors, please. Uh, that's your Uncle N train. He's smelly and always shows up late, but he loves you. Tell me, Jimmy, you've been, you've been working this door over 10 years. Yeah. COVID hits, you, you lose your job temporarily. What was that like? It was crazy because uh, you go from being friends with all these people and then all of a sudden you don't, you don't get to say goodbye and poof, for 15 months, everybody's gone. So uh, yeah, it was a little weird not, not coming in. For people to understand too, you got COVID early on. Over the years, you've worked the door here, obviously, but you've become friends with so many comedians, so many people pass through Gotham. What does it mean to you to develop that friendship and have that support through such a tough time? No, it was, it's, it's cool. I mean, people, people think my job is cool because, you know, Jerry Seinfeld calls me Jimmy. You know, like he knows your name. I go, yeah, it's kind of cool. Um, but no, to have that type of people you see on TV, uh, they're working hard and I see him here working on their craft. It's neat when I see somebody coming up, like Sebastian Maniscalco. When he was on stage for the first time, that's almost 10 years ago, maybe 11 years ago. And I watched him grow, 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 and then I watched his life change. This Craigslist is weird. It's like an invitation to get murdered. <laughs> you just put up an area rug for sale, come murder me. <laughs> That's why this is the greatest city on earth. No matter what anybody says, it's not dead by any stretch. We'll come back stronger than ever like we always do. We're just excited to be a part of it.